guys, it's Mr. Hands of 4 and 4 today. We are going to do some Algebra 2 stuff. We need to talk about quadratic relationships and how to solve for the x's, solve for the roots. So the first thing we're going to do is do solving by taking the square roots. This is something that we should not have too much trouble with, but basically you know that you can take a square root anytime you are given an x squared, that taking the square root is the inverse operation to squaring. So when you take the square root, you get rid of the square. So it becomes just x. So what we wanna do in a situation like this, when you have an equation, you wanna get the x isolated just like a linear equation. So you wanna subtract 64 on both sides. After you make that train track, to make sure you keep everything nice and balanced. These cancel out because they're inverses of each other, and you get x squared equals negative 64. Now, here's the thing that we got to know when you take the square root of a negative number. This is when we get into the land of imaginary numbers, which you guys should all be very aware with because you have no real friends in your life. So what you do is you get x is all by itself, and that's going to be equal to plus or minus. So then you got to ask yourself, what is the square root of a negative 64. If you can't really do it until now. So what you can do is ask yourself what times what makes 64, which is 8. And when you take the square root of a negative 1, you get this imaginary number, i. i represents a number that is not on the set of real numbers. So it, for example, on a graph like this, if you have a quadratic equation like this one, that may, might look something like this, you'll notice it never touches the x-axis. So you would think it doesn't have any real solutions, but it does have imaginary ones. And it's really complicated. Um, they named it imaginary because, you know, they couldn't think of a better name. Um, basically in a 3D plane you could see it, and we can talk more about that later. But what you have is two answers, so your answers are the, uh, positive 8i and negative 8i. And we're back. So we have a new equation. This one looks a little different, but don't let it scare you. All you need to do is solve for x, x squared in this situation. So we train track it. This is my favorite color expo marker. If you want to make me happy, buy me a bunch of these. Um, subtract 10 on both sides. That's going to cancel out, make a zero. So you're left with negative 20. x squared equals negative 5. You're almost ready to take the square root. First, you need to divide by negative 20. Divide by negative 20. That's going to make x squared equals a 5 over 20. Now, fractions, always reduce them when possible. This is a nice, easy fraction to reduce. So we're really going to have x squared equals 1 fourth. And you may think you're done, but you're not, because you cannot leave this squared. We do not want x times x equals 1 fourth, which is what this is. We want to take the square root because that's the inverse operation. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. And when you do that, you're going to get x equals, now square, when you take the square root of something, you have two answers, two potential answers. So you get plus or minus, and that's the notation for that, the square root of 1 fourth. Well, to do that, the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is, what times what makes 4? It's 2. So your two answers, your two solutions, your two x-intercepts are plus or minus 1 half. So let's talk about complex numbers. Complex numbers are numbers that are you written in the form a plus bi, where a is the real part, which is not what you have, and bi is the imaginary part which is what you all have. And when you have both of these things, you have a complex situation. Like trying to explain why the person that you said you were gonna to bring to dinner doesn't exist. So, what you gotta do when you have an expression like this, we wanna combine our like terms. So we wanna figure out what's real and what's imaginary and then put those things together. But in this one, we can't jump to that because we have this guy. You have a square root of a negative four, you cannot have a square root of a negative 4 because that doesn't exist so we need to turn convert it into an imaginary number and to do that you still take the square root of 4 which is 2 um, so basically let me break this out for you so what this ends up being is 2 times the square root of negative 1 negative 1 you can take the square root of it you get i you get the imaginary number i so this is really 2i so that's the progression the square root of negative 4 is 2i 
That lets you know it's an imaginary number. We bring down everything else. Sorry about my mess here. Um, and we're going to combine our like terms just like if we were, you know, adding variables and numbers. Treat the i's just like any other variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine. This is a positive. Sorry about that. Um, combine our i's. So we're going to get negative i. And we can't combine negative 5 and positive square root of 2. So it's just going to be negative 5 plus the square root of 2. Now what I will do is I will say that this is my real part, and this is my imaginary part. Real, imaginary. Anything with an i in it, anything that takes the square root of a negative number is imaginary. It's making sense to you too? You're my target audience for this video, so that's good. Here we go. So um, we just combine like terms. So we're gonna do that one more time and then I'm gonna show you guys how to multiply when you have complex numbers. So if we had um, two binomials and somebody give me a real number. Three. Three. Okay, now somebody give me an imaginary number. Two i. Two i, positive or negative? Positive. Positive two i plus. And I need another real number. Get spicy. Six. Get spicy? Get spicy. Not too spicy though. Like a mildly palated burn. 42. 42. Answer to everything. Okay. And somebody give me an imaginary number that's a little spicy too. 12i. 12i. Negative or positive? Okay. So here is a binomial, here is a binomial. We need to add these together. So to do this, we are just going to identify our like terms. And this works the same way if we we're subtracting. Subtraction is just adding a negative number. And we're going to combine our real numbers and get 45. And then combine our imaginary numbers and get negative 10i. Because you're adding a positive 2 with a negative 12. You're taking away more than you have. Or you owe me $12 and you only pay me $2, you still owe me my money, give me my money. Um, and then you're done. Pretend this was like 45 minus 10x. You can't mix variables and numbers. So this is it. This is your complex number. This is your imaginary part, that bi. And this is your a. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do um, is we're going to come up with um, a new binomial so we can multiply these guys. Um, I need uh, some crowdsourced information here. Let's not get too crazy though, because I don't want to multiply giant numbers. Give me something. Real or fake, it doesn't matter. Nine. Nine. Imaginary numbers. Three. Three I. Six I. Okay, again, purple Expo markers, they're my favorite, the teal ones too. So now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply using the distributive property. We're going to distribute twice, we're going to distribute this 9 times everything in the uh, binomial on the right hand side, and then we're going to distribute this 3i um, to the uh, other two terms in that binomial. Now some of you might be trying to use the f word, and I don't say the f word, I'm not going to say the f word, because I don't do the f word, we're just going to distribute. Um, so we get 9 times 6i, 9 times 6 is, you can do the trick. Put your six, your six finger down, you get 54. I was just showing my third video that the other day, shout out to Tiki Talks. 9 times 8 is, oh, sorry, I forgot my i. Don't forget the i. Got to make sure you know it's imaginary and not real. 9 times 8 is 72. We're done with the first term. The 9 is all used up. So next we need to multiply everything by the 3i. And this is where we get to have some fun. 3i times 6i is what? Well, 3 times 6 is 18. i times i is i squared, just like x times x is x squared. Um, and there's this whole powers of i thing we're going to talk about. And there's i to so the 1, 2, 3, 4 power. And you got to know what everything does. Um, and then we get 3i times 8, which is positive 24i. So before I convert my i squared, into something I can use. I want to combine my like terms, CLT, cucumber, lettuce, tomato, sandwich, and we are gonna combine our i's because those are just i terms. Um, I always rewrite things in order of magnitude, 
the degree of the exponent. So I'm going to go 18i squared. That looks like 76i plus 72. You're just about done. But i squared is not something that is acceptable in our final answer. So what we need to do is convert that. Now i squared is basically the square root of negative 1, i, that's i, times the square root of negative 1. You should know that if you time something that's a square root by itself, you get that thing. So this becomes negative 1. So i squared converts to negative 1. They're the same equal method. So you get 18 times negative 1 plus 76i plus 72. I'm going to skip a step here because I'm tired of writing. This is obviously negative 18. Combine like terms, you get 76i plus 54. That's your new complex number in bi plus a form, order doesn't matter. Um, remember your powers of i. You gotta make sure you pay attention to that. This has been an intro to complex numbers, real and imaginary, quadratic solutions. Subscribe, Miss Transform 4. I'll see you guys later.